Captains. Greetings fellow Captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the High Pound. And today we are having our very first look and our very first few games in the premium tier 6 German destroyer, the Z23. And gotta admit, she's a fairly pretty looking destroyer. Um, I know a lot of people are going to compare it to the Z23, uh, but to be honest with you, as we probably all know, I'm not a massive destroyer player, so I don't actually have the Z23 unlocked. So uh, I'm not going to do that comparison. I'm purely going to talk about what I think of this ship. Uh, did I enjoy playing it? Am I going to continue to uh, play it? And, uh, and well, yeah, <laughs> give it a give it a bit of a bit of an overview so first of all let's have a look let's have a look at my commander first so you, you know where we stand because stupidly I didn't record the base stats before this came out so we are using our legendary rank 2 uh, Eric B uh, we have gone for contact is imminent so we have a four kilometer uh, four knots sorry increase to our torpedo speed uh, we have minus six to our sea detectability range uh, twist and track which also increases the traverse of the destroyer's guns uh, smoke screen dispersion time and deployment time and unstoppable for the engine repair uh, obviously our base trait reduces sea detectability range anyway and we're using Jezza Schwartz sticky for minus four to sea detectability range and Charles Madden for main battery traverse speed and main battery reload time. Now, the reason why I've done this, my very first impressions were the turrets are really quite slow. Um, I don't know if this is like a general thing for the, the German destroyers, but you know, compared to the American gunboats, yeah, the, the traverse is, is harsh, uh, although they do have quite large caliber guns. So let's have a look at the overview. So tough. So we have a higher than average base HP rating. The ship is armed with high caliber main battery guns and below average concealment. This ship is visible to enemies from a greater distance. So the last sister ship of the Z23 uh, belonging to the series of ships laid down after the start of World War II, the Type 1936 A Mob. Uh, she carries 150 millimeter guns and between 1944 and 1945 she underwent an overhaul which saw considerable reinforcements to her aa defenses uh, this however required one of the ship's main turrets to be dismounted so we have one dual turret on the front two single turrets on the back and to be honest with you, like i said i've never played the z23 so i don't know where the uh, the final turret uh, would have laid but as you can see there's some AA emplacements uh, there on the front of the ship uh, midship we have uh, can we zoom in yeah let's zoom in right okay so we've got some additional some AA turrets at the front some more midships there that's quite uh, I'm guessing somewhere around you was the other turret then or it might have been on the front of the ship uh, more AA turrets so this has quite a lot of anti-air defences, um, a lot like the Cossack which was released uh, not so long ago, uh, it's uh, an AA variant of the ship. Uh, now obviously I think they've definitely done the right move here by uh, dropping it down a tier, so, down. so losing one gun, uh, dropping it to tier 6, uh, I think they've done a good job and placed it quite well. So let's have a look at my stats then. So we've got nothing that increases our base hit points. So we have 19,600 with 6 to 30 millimeter armor. We have the d dual turret, which is 150 mil at the front and the two 150 mil single turrets at the rear. A firing range of just shy of 11 kilometers with a 7.3 second reload. 2200 maximum HE shell damage and 3700 maximum AP shell damage. Uh, we have two quadruple 
torpedo launchers, the 533mm Verling torpedoes, with a 90 second reload time, maximum damage of 14,400, and a sea detectability range of 1.3. Uh, our range is 8.5km, and, and our torpedo speed is 69. Uh, maximum speed 37 turning circle is 670 and a rudder shift time of 450 seconds i'll be honest with you this this ship does feel a little bit sluggish for a destroyer compared to okay the russians are russians are pretty sluggish but i've been when, I, when you play the, i've been playing the british and the japanese quite a bit lately and uh, yeah it's not the most agile um, that's for sure it doesn't seem to you, you can't seem to be able to swing the boat around as quickly as some of the others but I guess that's part of the treat of it having you know the heaviest guns and the highest uh, hit pool so detectability range by sea we've got that down to five kilometers 2.9 by air uh, two is our guaranteed and whilst firing in smoke 2.9 kilometers uh, we have upgraded this ship with the aiming system mod 1 so better dispersion allows our allows our torpedo turrets to traverse a bit quicker that's nobody cares about secondary battery range it's a destroyer uh, we've gone for propulsion mod uh, because the ability to change direction accelerate decelerate quickly is always going to help with our general survivability and for our final perk what else would you go for rather than the concealment mod on a destroyer so that's a basic rundown that's our build and uh, let's uh, let's get into some gameplay shall we apologies for the uh, slightly poorer audio quality that was recorded direct off the playstation 4 and i don't know why it just the audio is not that clear it's a little bit tinny uh, but we're back on the pc now uh, recording uh, post gameplay uh, i didn't want to go through all the stats and everything after the fact because it's remembering the stages you were and it gets it gets a little bit messed up so here we are um obviously as you can see this we are on the atlantic map playing domination and this is a particularly destroyer heavy uh game which means we're not gonna get massive damage because well there's just not that much uh, damage out there to be gained so we've got four destroyers and five battleships uh, per team so yeah it's a it's quite a strange mix and obviously we want to be particularly careful here to ensure that we uh, we don't get ourselves killed and for some unknown reason uh, our friendly fabuki there sorry akatsuki uh, decides to torpedo us absolutely uh, absolutely no reason for that at all and uh, for all intensive purposes, uh, he's going to be, uh, I think for the most part, pretty much useless for the rest of the map. Uh, obviously, everyone knows the Akatsuki is quite a stealthy boat, and he's particularly good at spotting. And that's what we were hoping he was going to do. He seemed to uh, run away to A. If you look, it's always worth paying attention to the map. If you look uh, in the uh, sort of mid-left-hand side of the mini-map, map, our friendly Fabuki, which is over there, is basically just hanging around with the battleships. Uh, nothing that side of the map is spotted at all. Uh, and bearing in mind, there's four destroyers, so I'm predicting to see a destroyer here, which is why I'm, I'm basically I'm getting myself an exit route. I'm placing myself this part of the camp because yes, there's an island in front of me that if I need to, if I come up against more than one destroyer. I can uh, I can bolt it behind there and uh, and try and uh, try and improve my survivability. So C is being taken, A is being taken. The f the Fabuki down there in the middle right of the map, um, a left of the map. Sorry, still doing absolutely nothing. And uh, our friend the Akatsuki that talked us is sitting behind an island. Well played, sis. Well played. Right. Okay. So we can clearly see. That, uh, that A is being capped, C is being contested. So if nobody else is gonna do it, I guess I'm gonna have to take matters into my own hands because, well, sometimes it doesn't matter how good or how bad your team is. 
uh, some, or how good or how bad you play. Uh, you, sometimes you can't even buy a win in this game. If anyone watched uh, Dan's stream on uh, on Sunday, we had uh, an incredibly bad run of luck when it comes to uh, when it comes to teammates. So we have an Arizona, which uh, we're looking to uh, to hit with some torpedoes. There's also a Gnizen Hour over here, and uh, there is the uh, one of the enemy destroyers. So we're we're looking we're looking to see who's going to be the uh, best target. We decide the Arizona, but unfortunately the Arizona goes unspotted, and uh, the Gnizen Hour looks like he's going to make a push. So uh, we set off our torpedoes. We set our second set. A slight delay behind. All right, yes, we could shoot at this mass right now, but I'd rather keep him lit up and hold my fire because if I get spotted and they know I'm here, that Gneisenauer is going to be expecting torps and he's going to turn. Uh, the the mass almost comes into our detectability range, so we hit the smoke, hoping that the Gneisenauer is not paying any attention and he's too focused on the battleships up ahead and there we go one two three four hits flooding uh, some incapacitations and 40,000 damage which is a, uh, a tasty start to uh, to the beginning of our battle so we're trying to maneuver ourselves there's now a Queen Elizabeth and so we've got a Gnizen Hour, a Queen Elizabeth and a mass all in and the Arizona don't forget the Arizona Yes, there's four ships in uh, in here, and as you can see, that uh, that guy's now who decided to push is starting to uh, regret his decisions. That's for sure. So uh, we're holding off. That mass isn't pushing. He's not going for our battleships. So uh, we can we can take advantage of the position where we are in here and uh, and uh, try and uh, try and do a bit more damage to his uh, his friendly battleships now this is where we get spotted so we sling it forward we see the uh, the collision now is now almost completely out of health we set him on fire and kaboom that's our first kill but the mistake here is obviously we weren't paying attention to the map we got spotted uh, we've now been spotted by the mass as well and well those battleships are now going to know that there's torpedoes coming and typical hive fashion islands if there's an island to run into i will absolutely undoubtedly slam straight into it but we did score two torpedo hits in amongst that bit of madness there and uh, and that has put us up to 62,000 damage and uh, and a total of six torpedo hits and and flooding but unfortunately they've been prepared the whole time and uh, and uh, they've used their repair parties and we have uh, unfortunately not been able to maintain any of that flooding damage over any sort of particular period so we're gonna hit the engine boost uh, and as you can see the Fabuki is now actually engaging with the mass uh, I forget, I didn't pay attention to what our Akatsuki was doing. Our Akatsuki seems to, uh, that was in the middle, has has perished. We shouldn't have, we should have paid a bit more attention to that. And there we go. Uh, thanks to the bit of assistance from the Ismail and the, uh, and the, uh, and the Fabuki that was over here, the mass is now dead. So now I have a Bayern uh, pushing into the cap. Uh, that uh, that we were trying to that we were trying to fight for control over, the Ismail back behind us. The, all right, he helped us kill the mass. Let's not judge him overly harshly for the moment. Uh, but we're going to get in here. Uh, I I'm looking at this white okay, case. So we've got our Bayern, we've got an Arizona and a Queen Elizabeth. Like this this isn't going to end well for uh, for our teammates so we're going to try and get in there and uh, and try and cause some damage now i'm a bit apprehensive to fire my torpedoes here because it's like yeah okay the arizona sailing in a straight line and uh, and just looking at our bayon but is he you know is he gonna turn is he not gonna turn oh we'll we'll fire them off 
the, the only way we're going to save our teammate here is uh, is if we uh, if we cause some damage and we get spotted the Bayern is done for and by some miracle we, we haven't been shot yet so we fire off uh, some torpedoes because that Queen Elizabeth is a very low health and all we have to do is catch him with one but again they are fully aware that I am here and like magic the Amazona just sits there keeps sailing in a straight line and takes a bunch of our torpedoes the Ismail who we were going to judge quite harshly has now taken it upon himself to push forward and get into the fight and uh, he's uh, actually assisting us quite well here but we are going to have to smoke up unfortunately the Queen Elizabeth did make the turn uh, and did successfully dodge our torpedoes but the Arizona is quite close to got another 23 seconds till our torpedoes reload so we're going to exit the cap circle and uh, and hopefully we'll start paying attention and, uh, and start firing on that uh, uh, firing on that uh, that uh, Arizona <laughs> that's also encroaching in on us it looks like uh, the uh, the Queen Elizabeth is making a turn so we set our torpedoes off in the direction we uh, we expect him to go and true high fashion there's an island no wait we successfully dodge the island but we're looking here and yeah this Arizona is uh, is getting awfully close uh, a little too close for comfort uh, I think so we are gonna smoke up He's probably aware that we're here, but we've now lost sight of him. And this is where I have an absolute brainwave. Because yes, the American destroyers do in fact have hydroacoustic search. And the range is, uh, is, the range is pretty good. Uh, I, <laughs> I should really check what that is. And there uh, we hit the Arizona again. We do get flooding, but as has happened with every other time, because there's no cruisers on our team, no one uh, setting these battleships on fire. Uh, his damage repair was sitting there, ready, waiting, and uh, we unsick. Well, well, he just simply straight put it out. But we are up to a, I feel, rather respectable 91,000 damage for a non DD player playing a German DD, which is his most non played of the non played destroyers. So he's getting too close for comfort now. If we fire our guns, we will be spotted. So we wait. We pop out of our smoke the last second. His guns are not pointing towards us. And kaboom. Uh, good night. And that puts us up to 801,000 damage. But obviously, that uh, we lost our Ismail, I think, while <laughs> doing that exchange. Uh, again paying attention to that map I keep on saying it and well you know I'm not doing it myself unfortunately I'm not paying attention to the mini map but you know I was in a very close quarters battle and really needed to concentrate so I didn't mess up and uh, I'll take a uh, <laughs> take a take a take, yeah, what's that on the front of the Arizona uh, nine 15 inch shells or 14 inch shells I'm sure it's 15 inch shells because that would have really really hurt now all that's left is the Queen Elizabeth that we've been uh, that we've been battling with in this cap since the very beginning now I'm trying to pay attention to Queen Elizabeth I'm noticing yeah her guns activated. are pointing over towards our teammates so we're gonna use our speed boost use uh, use that obviously our speed and maneuverability to our advantage here and we're going to start lighting her up we're going to try and set a fire essentially and that's when we pick up our high caliber now she has turned into us she's trying to get her guns around to finish us off and uh, fortunately one of our teammates help us out and uh, that is the end of that so that was like my third battle and uh, as you see, a very respectable uh, 2700 uh, XP for the end of that. And um, how do we do money wise? My uh, 
editing software. Sorry about that. <laughs> and a 105,000. And obviously quite the money maker because we ended up with 402,000 credits. 4,000 base XP. 11 torpedo hits. 2 kills. 3 fires. 8 floods. And a flag capture. So I hope you enjoyed my uh, my brief and quick intro to the Z39. And until next time, take care.